This demonstration will give you an overview of the extracts that are available within ERS. Essentially, eReferral Service is a large database of activity that takes place when a referral is created and when that referral is progressed through the system. The extracts themselves are outputs of raw data from that database. Because of this, extracts are presented in a database-like format in a text file that will need some further processing for the information to be meaningful. The information contained within the extracts can be incredibly useful to services as they contain information that is not available in the standard ERS reports. However, due to the raw format that the data is presented in, further manipulation of the data will be required. This usually means that an information analyst will need to be involved to review and organise the information from the extracts. However, the information analyst may not have the relevant e-referral service experience to understand the activity, so collaborative working between the data analyst and an e-referral service expert is the most effective way to extract meaningful data from these files. Extract data can be viewed using many different applications. As mentioned before, the extracts come in a text format. Specifically, they are supplied in a CSV format. Note that although this can be viewed in an Excel file, they are not limited to this application. When Excel is installed on a PC, CSV files tend to be registered in an Excel format as a default. The best applications to use for extracts are database applications that are specifically designed for manipulating this type of data. This includes SQL Server applications and Microsoft Access. Although not ideal, Excel can be used for simple analysis, as we will show in this video. Because we are working with database type data, it is displayed in a relational database structure. This means that a number of files need to be used together to make sense of the data. We will see an example of this later in the demonstration. The EBS X02 file essentially contains a log of every action performed in ERS. It gives very fine detail on exactly what has happened, where and by which user. It contains information on all of the activity coming in and going out of your organisation. So, for example, if you are a CCG, you would get information on all of the referrals that were made within your CCG, regardless of where those referrals were made to. Or, if you belong to a provider organisation, you will see all of the data for the referrals coming into your organisation, regardless of which CCG the referrer came from. This also means that information is recorded here regardless of the type of referral that was made. So appointment requests, advice and guidance requests and any amendments made to requests will all be logged here. The EBSX03 file is the main decode file for the EBSX02. So, within a relational database type structure, rather than putting a lot of text into an already large file such as the EBSX02, the text is substituted for a lookup number. So, for example, rather than having ear, nose and throat in the document every time there is an action for this type of referral, instead there is a number that replaces it. This is a much more efficient way to store information. The fields in the EBSX02 file that can be decoded using the EBSX03 will usually end in underscore CD. And it is possible that while analysing the data from the EBSX02, you will need to link to this file multiple times to decode all of the information that you need. The data in these files is not specific to each organisation. The data is common for all users nationally. The next lookup file is the EBSX04 file. This contains all of the information relating to ODS codes. By looking up the ODS code, you can see the practice, the parent organisation, which is the CCG, and so on. The ODS data contained in the EBSX04 is not created and maintained by eReferral Service. 
this data is provided by ODS. The result of this is that any changes that are made to ODS may not appear in the EBS X04 immediately. In fact, it is possible that updates made to ODS may not appear for up to eight weeks. Any links to the EBS X04 will be in the org ID fields. And just like the EBS X03, this information is not specific to a particular organisation. It is common to all users nationally. The EBS X05 gives a list of all the services contained within ERS. This links the EBS X02 with the service ID fields. This includes information such as what the specialty of the service is, what priorities it supports and whether or not it is published. Again, it is common to all users of ERS nationally. Finally, the EBS X06 is a list of all the users of ERS. This links to the EBS X02 with the registered clinician ID field. This extract is also common to all users. Let's have a look at how simple data can be analysed using two extracts. In the EBS X02 file, there is a column of action underscore CD. This is a log of all the actions that have been performed within ERS. So for example, an advice and guidance request or an appointment booking. In the action column, we might see the number 1412 and we need to know what this means. So we would look this up in the EBS X03 file. In this file, there is a column called code. We would find 1412 in this column and then look over to the display column to see that 1412 actually means book appointment. Now let's look at an example of looking into several extracts for data. Let's say that we were looking at the registered clinician ID column and saw the number 12345678. This relates to an individual user of ERS. To find this, we would open the EBS X06 file and search for 12345678 in the user ID column and then look across to the username column to see that the user is John Smith. We would also see that the ODS code for this user is XYZ. So we could look this up in the EBS X04 and see that the org name for XYZ is Smith Practice. Let's have a look at the EBS X02 itself and the data it contains. This is what the EBS X02 looks like when it is opened in Excel. This file is quite large so it may take some time to open. The column names are shown here. The UBRN ID should not be confused with the UBRN that is generated when a referral request is made. This UBRN can be found elsewhere in the file. The UBRN ID is a separate pseudo-anonymized identifier and is consistent for each referral but is not commonly used. The e-referral pathway start column shows the referral to treatment or RTT start clock date. In e-referrals the RTT clock starts when the referral first appears on the service provider's work list. The due date is no longer used but it is kept in the EBS X02 so that it is compatible with older versions. The specialty CD refers to the specialty that the patient has been referred into and this can be looked up in the EBS X03 file. The clinic type and priority can also be looked up in the EBS X03 and provide further details on the referral information. The referring clinician ID appears in an unusual format within an Excel document. This is because the number is too large for Excel to process. You can click on the individual cell within the file and the actual number will appear in the formula bar at the top. This number can then be used to look up the referring clinician in the EBS X06 as shown in the earlier example. The referring org ID is the ODS code of the referring organisation and can be looked up in the EBS X04. Strict information governance means that we cannot provide the NHS number of a patient in this file. So instead, we have a pseudo-anonymised patient ID. This number remains the same for an individual for all of their referrals, but the person cannot be identified from the number. 
The patient age is shown here. The registered clinician ID and the registered organisation ID are shown here. The guidance date and guidance override are no longer used. The shortlist count is the number of services that were listed on the referral request by the referrer when the request was made. In other words, how many choices the patient was given by the referrer. Each action performed in ERS is given a number, and this number is logged here. The numbers are incremental, so you can sort them in the order that they happened, should you need to. The action date and time is another column that has been amended by Excel because the number is too big. By clicking on the individual cell, you are able to see the full date and timestamp for an action. The action CD column shows the action that took place. This can be found in the EBS X03. Jumping across to the action reason. Not all actions have a reason, but, for example, when you have to cancel an appointment, you are asked for a reason why. This may be that the patient was ill or no longer required treatment. The reason is logged here. The service ID is shown here. Again, not all actions have a service ID. We can look these up in the EBS X05 file. We can see the appointment date and time here if it applies to this action. If we jump across again, we can see that this file contains a partial postcode for the patient. They are partial so that a patient cannot be identified from these, but they are very useful for data analysis as this allows us to see what area referrals are coming from. We mentioned earlier that the UBRM was located in this file and this is where you can find it. There is also information on any related UBRNs here. IWT is the indicative wait time. This is the length of time before an appointment is available at a service in days. We can also see the patient's gender and whether or not this is a test patient. The original priority is particularly useful if the priority of a referral has changed at some point in the pathway. Now let's look at a practical example of how this data can be decoded using a simple lookup. In this example, we're going to decode the specialty column shown here, but all of the other decodings in the EBS X02 are done in exactly the same way. The first thing we need to do is insert a new column, and then we want to populate this with the lookup so that we can find this information. Before I do this, I need to know exactly what information I am looking up. As we mentioned previously, all of this data is held in the EBS X03 file, so I need to start by opening this. Once I have this open, you can see that this contains all of the codes and all of the display information. I will highlight all of the information that I want to pull across and then copy it. I will then go back to the EBS X02 and open a new tab and then paste the data from the EBS X03 here. I then need to name this range of data. I do this by selecting Define Name and then changing the name here to EBS X03 Data. Then I click OK. If we look here, we can see an example of the data that we are pulling across. So if we look at the code 208, we can see that this represents the specialty ear, nose and throat. If we now go back to the main tab on the EBS X02, we can see that 208 is here. So when we have completed this decode, this should show as ear, nose and throat. To do this, we click on the cell shown here and then we need to add the data that we want shown here. We start by typing VLOOKUP, then we need to enter the value which is 208 and is located in D3. Then we enter the table that we want to look up, so we enter the name of the data that we entered earlier which is EBS X03 data and then we need to enter the specific column index data that we need, which is 3. And finally, we want this to be an exact match of the data. By default, this will populate as true, which is an approximate match.
so we need to enter false so that this populates an exact match. And here we see that this cell is now showing ear, nose and throat. All we have to do now is drag this cell downwards and this will populate all of the other cells with the correct information. This can be done in the same way for any of the information contained in the EBS X02. However, it is worth noting that performing this lookup increases the file size considerably, especially if it is done for more than one column, and it can make Excel run very slowly.